Hey everybody, we're about to do another unboxing, but I need to explain some things because I always do that. Right out of camera range, there are two people that I absolutely adore. One is one of my rotten children uh, and the representative from the Seattle Annex who is dying to see what's in these boxes so that she can try and get them for Seattle instead of thinking about Atlanta or Florida or Hampton Roads or any of the other siblings. And the other person that you cannot see is not just a good friend, but a hell of a benefactor for the library. I've talked to you before about Tony de Blas's collection, what Tony meant to me, why having so many of those things in the library is so important so that you will learn about the man, not just the publisher. And standing just out of view is the patron who has made all of this possible. At some point in time, I am going to embarrass Tom Butts by making him bring his face over here so that he's in this camera. And before I even begin with the box, uh, I wanted to show you what I may be opening that box with. Some of you can see the bat. And remembering that Flatermouse means bat, I think you know whose knife this was. This was the first thing out of the box of things that Tom brought with him that we started to open and I started to drool and cry and, you know, there are other things that I will explain in another video that are going to make me drool and cry more. But since Tom has determined that I open this box in front of him, be aware that there may be a lot of drooling and crying. So I figured you need the backstory in order to understand what's happening. So now the box weighs more than he does, which is saying a lot. Okay, yes, the, the, the box has a small child wiggling around it. Ooh, the box is broken. Okay, it's not the first time. The United States Postal Service has broken a box, and I understand that because the woman who delivers to me is about four foot nothing and probably couldn't lift half of this anyway. Ah, the hell with it. There are times when on Christmas morning, screw it, just rip the box open. Oh, uh, this is going to be very hard to do a, um, an explanation while I'm trying. Hold the photo, hold your hand up while we the photo. Oh, over right. the, the pieces um, you can't see. Which is a whole lot of it. Um, by way of the drawing, many of you remember that Drummer was a newspaper before it was ever a magazine. And all of the people who were involved in Drummer in the early Home File League in Los Angeles, one of whom was Larry Townsend, a prolific writer for this tribe, uh, provided jerk off material, not, to an awful, not just to an awful lot of men, but also to an awful lot of women. And, Oh my, you can't see most of these. Um, I, I, oh, I need you to trust me. Actually, I'm trying to find one that I can show you uh, because the photography on this is stunning. So let's see if we can do this. There was a hand in the photo and it wasn't mine. Uh, let's see if we can do this like this. This is one of a whole lot of Larry Townsend that's in this box. A, um, Larry and Tony, of course, were friends, and Tony published a lot of Larry's stuff. And even with this one, let me see now how we... There! <laughs> you probably can't see in the corner that Tony's seal... Well, wrong direction. There we go. Tony's personal seal is on the bottom of this magazine. Uh, this, Jesus. 
Um, Jesus. Uh, uh, where was I? Um, this read some of the titles. Really is. Oh, I read this one when I was first. I mean, this is a complete. Good Lord, I never saw this. I'm sorry, Squirrel, where was I? Uh, not only am I taking a walk through my own past, I remember reading this one when I was a kingling. And not just enjoying the artwork because there's a tremendous amount, but you can't show you those. Uh, Nope, can't show you that. Nope, can't show you any of those. Um, thank God the backs of these are blank. Oh, the early novels of Larry. Well, oh, keep the hand where it belongs. God, look at the artwork on these. There is a, a, here's one I've never seen. This one I actually can show you. And again, Tony's raised seal is right there. The Bloody Tower and Other Stories of Leather SM by Macbeth and Deflator Mouse. So I will definitely be reading oh, wow. Tony. More of Larry's photo books. God, he's cute. Let's see if I can do that this way and preserve this young man's modesty. Uh, actually preserving YouTube's modesty. <laughs> I may be a lesbian, but I love to look because pretty is just pretty. And that's pretty. I remember this anthology because it so much reminded me of looking for Mr. Benson. And that is a whole different story of looking for Mr. Benson, question mark, or looking for Mr. Benson, period. And there, there's a picture on this anthology that I, I have to do this with. And it also made me incredibly grateful that I have indoor plumbing. Now, for those of you who can see the pendulum and remember the old story of the pit and the pendulum, and the fact that in the original story by Paul, the pendulum went through the guy's internal organs as he slowly waited to die. That's not cutting through the midriff. That's cutting off something that's a tad bit more vital. At least if you're a owl or man. You know, I, I love reading the stories and I look at the artwork and all I can think of is I am eternally grateful for an innie. <laughs> And this uh, trilogy of stories, anthology of stories, also has stories in here by Tony, which means I'm going to be up a lot these nights reading myself to sleep, don't you know? This is just, this is sleep therapy. You believe me, don't you? <laughs> oh, 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 let me do this differently. You see the size of this box? moving in front of the camera. It is full of treasures of Larry Townsend. It is all, well, oh, there's, oh no, that's one little leather boy. Hold on, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> okay, this one can actually be shown. And this is another one that I've never seen, a potpourri of s &M. And there are lots and lots and lots and lots and lots 
Wow. I didn't realize that this had been done in this size. Run No More, which was the sequel to Run Little Leather Boy. Uh, speaking of Run Little Leather Boy. And uh, part of this story was released many, many years ago by the Traveler's Companion when they did a series for gay men called The Other Traveler. God. Tom, actually, it's time for me to put you on the spot. Wait, no, I'm looking. <laughs> Stop trolling, and we'll get back to it. Come here, you handsome thing. You have heard me talk about him before. Hey, yes, Mama. But yep. you need to see the man who has made so much of this possible. The debt of gratitude that's personal. You all know, but the debt of gratitude from the library for not only sharing his memories and the bits and pieces of the life of two men who were very important in his life is immeasurable. Um, Tom, say hello to your public. You might as well get used to it. <laughs> hello, everyone. There. Um, before I start screwing up this camera and getting very, very teary-eyed, which is coming, uh, I wanted you to see his face. And so that every time I start going to pieces as I'm opening a new box, you'll know who did it. Yeah, who's to blame? So for now, oh, and he's spending two days sleeping in and enjoying the scholar's quarters in the library. So it's always wonderful to have a young scholar as a guest. For now, I'm going to drool over the rest of these in private because I'm about to leave stains down my shirt. And Cece's trying to get into this box without me. So as usual, I say, until you come and join us, See you in the library.